Alrighty. That appears to be Reddit. Oh yeah. D's four, the memories of Salsetta. Okay. Okay. Uh, I guess I gotta lower this. Lower that more. Okay, so this is gonna be an interesting set of thoughts. Primarily because. Uh, they're predominantly negative. <laughs> um, interestingly enough, I don't think I like this game that much. Uh, which is uh, one of those crazy things um, where, I mean, at, at this point, you know, I'm invested in the franchise or whatever, so even if I don't like it, um, I'll probably see it through to the end. Uh, but I, I wasn't very happy with um, how things changed for this game in general. Um, uh, I have here, this experience is what I was afraid of when I played Yee's Origin, and if Yee's Celsetta was the first title, I likely would not have continued with the rest of the franchise. Um, there's, there's a lot of little things and big things that this game does that I wouldn't say is done poorly, but is not done with um, an amount of polish or, or um, nuance that makes those great action-adventure games great. And I, I think this one just kind of sits in the, like, the mediocre pool, to be honest. Uh, it's, it's a very big disappointment. Um, there's a, a lack of polish uh, that brings out the flaws in Yeez's simplistic combat and play styles. And I'll, I'll kind of touch on that in a little bit, but uh, this game is, is not very complicated. And the franchise thus far has not been very complicated. But what's made that, that particular style stand out more and actually flow better is that the combat was very, uh, very, very well done. Um, there weren't things that kind of slowed you down, I guess, or, or made things just take a little bit more time. It was very fast paced. Uh, there were things all over the place. Uh, you, you had to be on your toes at all times. And this is, this is not anything like the previous titles as far as like mechanics go to uh, a good extent, or a large extent perhaps. Um, it's also a large departure in nearly every way from the previous titles. Um, it's, it's so different. It's so very different that um, it's quite the risk uh, to do what they did. So uh, now that the story is complete, was the story satisfying? And uh, I want to say no. I do want to say no. Mainly because that ending sequence, um, while, while it was nice, uh, it, it wasn't... It wasn't what I wanted out of, out of this. Um, not in the slightest. Um, it went full JRPG trope on us at the very end there. Um, and it still bugs me that Adil or Lisa or someone that can fly or maybe even um, LaFance who can teleport. You know, like any one of these people could have done that task. But no, we got to run up a mountain and risk our lives just so that you can witness the pride of humanity or something like that. It, it, it's, it's really stupid. And then um, they totally either glossed over, forgot, plot hole, something. Um, a deal is supposed to go crazy soon. And, uh, you know, the mask is only a temporary solution, remember? So who's going to stop them now? 
I don't know. That, that, that needed to be wrapped up there. Uh, does it feel complete? It does feel complete. Uh, they, they wrapped up the story quite nicely. Um, I, uh, other than a deal, of course. Well, actually, actually, I'm taking it back. It is not complete because the whole a deal thing is a pretty big deal. Um, how was the pacing? Uh, the pacing was okay, I guess. Um, there were some um, thingamabobbers, side quests, um, which uh, greatly detract from them. And there were some side areas. Um, but for the most part, it was actually uh, straight to the point the majority of the time. Um, I can't think of anything that kind of just made you do things pointlessly. So uh, pacing was pretty good. Uh, thoughts on the story? Uh, the story hook of recovering memories and exploring an unexplored forest was very dull because there was little, or yeah, there was little to no plot development in that. Um, this was something that kind of bugs me, is that the first like seven or so hours, maybe even more than that, um, we're exploring the forest, and that's just not interesting, um, and that kind of compounds on some other issues which um i guess i'll uh, go into more detail in a little bit but uh this is an open world ish game they they went out of their way to make this less like ye's origin or ye's well actually it's it's kind of like uh ye's chronicles one as well um but like there's there's not much to do in this this open world ish kind of thing um you just run around and killing monsters uh the the biggest and only thing that you can actually do as an exploration thing is fight the lord of the forest which was really really cool i'll give you that but that's about it um let me see nothing that happens prior to highland is very important and it isn't until Gruta reveals himself at the end of Highland that plot starts to move forward. Um, this was uh, this kind of ties into um, the whole forest first seven hours thing is not that great. Is because everything before the end of Highland or before Highland, I guess, um, it's just side quests. It like. Breaking it down, it's just side quests. Everything we do in Komodo uh, has no relevance to the plot. Now, you might be thinking, oh, but what about the masks? I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Um, and in that cell, the fishing village or whatever, nothing at all happens there that's relevant to the plot either. Um, so uh, that, in a nutshell, just kind of, to me, it just kind of feels pointless. Um, there's no real sense of urgency or purpose like earlier titles for many hours. Um, this is not necessarily, uh, like a negative or a positive criticism. It's just more of an observation. Um, I personally, because of how the rest of the series is going, I was expecting more sense of urgency and we didn't really get that from the get go. Um, you know, like origins, we got to find the, 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 the goddesses and ease one and two, we need to um, um, save the world. I, I forget. It's been a while. Um, but I was expecting urgency here, and it didn't, it didn't happen. So, um, you know, that's just a very neutral thing. Uh, recycled narrative plot points with Fishing Village and Treehouse Village. Um, this kind of bugged me a lot. Um, and it, it wasn't treading the exact same story, of course. But all the major notes were exactly the same. We go in there, we're accused of doing something that we didn't do. Um, we are uh, left with uh, making it so that our name is cleared by solving their problem or bringing to light that the problem actually wasn't our fault to begin with. And by doing that, it's, or when we do that, it's because we coincidentally are witnessed to the problem that was never our fault to begin with with someone who can vouch for us um it 
at least a little bit of variation. I mean, come on. Okay, so uh, I had mentioned that uh, everything prior to Highland is not much, pretty much no plot development. So imagine if everything prior to the primeval lands was removed and the game starts with Edo coming out of the dungeon and seeing his grave with his name on it. Okay, so everything before that coming out of that dungeon to see the grave is entirely removed. So like all that, that uh, western or eastern side of the forest and everything like that, just gone. Okay. Uh, amnesia or no, you know, he can have it or he doesn't. Uh, he finds his way to Highland and finds out that he died in the eyes of the town. He runs around trying to figure out the mystery of his death and is eventually summoned by Adil, who has a mission for him. Find the Mask of the Sun, which was once in his possession, Adil's possession. Adil reaches Danan, and the story essentially unfolds normally. Ruta shows up to take it. We fail to stop him. We, gave, we give chase. We find Adil's in possession, or is possessed, or whatever, etc. Yada, yada, this and that. Um, it it kind of just breaks down to what prior to Highland is important. What what is what does that serve other than just to provide gameplay? Um, and I don't think it really serves anything. Uh, Ozma and Karna do not get a plot arc that um develops throughout the story and and finishes. Um, you could say, oh, Ozma learned about Sparta's. Oh. What, what does his knowledge of Sparta's get to do? I mean, yeah, he gets the payoff of learning about it, but it doesn't accomplish anything. Uh, Karna gets to save her brother. Great. Uh, that would be something special if Remnos actually accomplished something this entire game. He is literally pointless. <laughs> uh, Durin does get um, some uh, plot that actually develops throughout the game. Um, but you could just move that to the second half, uh, or the, the half that isn't cut. Uh, Leon and Griselda are not really that important characters, uh, so those can definitely be cut. Um, so, like, in a nutshell, I think this game was longer than it needed to be. You know, I, I appreciate having extra gameplay and all that other good stuff, but... Um, it, it should be meaningful. It shouldn't not do anything, which it didn't do anything. Uh, Amnesia is a very disconnected story choice, which hurts my enjoyment. Every NPC plays on the same, you did this, but you don't remember loop, which doesn't add any diversity. Uh, Amnesia is just kind of a poor narrative device, I think. Um, I have here, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to make interesting. Uh, best example of it being done, uh, done well to my recollection was KOTOR, and that was only because of the twist. Um, if for whatever reason you haven't played KOTOR and want to play it, I guess I won't spoil it, but there's a twist in that game, and it makes the whole amnesia thing entirely worth it. Um... Or, or, yeah, entirely worth it. And uh, this game doesn't really do anything new with Amnesia. Um, amnesia is just... It's, it, it's not fun, I guess. Um, for me, anyways. Um, why are Adol's memories scattered all around Celsetta? Very self-explanatory. Uh, for some writing stuff, uh, the humor was very welcomed, and while it mostly came from Durin, it was very enjoyable. I really, really liked uh, some of the comedic relief that Durin provided in this. Um, some other characters uh, had their, their little quips and things like that. Um, so uh, I really liked uh, the majority of the writing, actually. Um, I don't think I have any issues with the writing. So, props on that. Um, for characters, Karna and Durin are great. Kalilika is obnoxious. Enough said. Uh, for gameplay mechanics and design, uh, some gameplay elements that stand out. Uh, the game, while linear, has taken a lot of influence from open world games. Uh, so I kind of touched on this before. Um, the things that you can actually do 
or the some of the things that it draws in from open world games are like um, you collect monster drops. There's collection points all over the place. There's wide, expansive areas. Uh, there's a high monster count and monster density. Um, but in turn, you know, there's little worldly interaction. There's there's uh, there's no benefits of this open world splash actually added in. Like, for example, there's no random events. Uh, there's no wondrous discoveries. Um, there's uh, no secret NPCs or secret items or, or something along those lines. Uh, but there was a level 59 super boss that was crazy. So uh, I'll let you have that one, but can't have the other ones. Uh, the side quest board is a nice addition. However, the quests themselves are mostly unappealing. Uh, I stopped reading them after a while. I, I guess that's a testament to them just not really being all that interesting. Um, um, I, I don't want to necessi necessarily say that's like a negative thing or it ruins my enjoyment or anything, but um, it, it would be nice for side quests to hold a little bit more weight um, to the story or to the characters or something like that. Um, for the most part, they just, I don't want to say they were fetch quests, but they just weren't meaningful. Um, changing characters is really cool. Uh, I really, really like that there are, what, six different characters, and they all have uh, a slightly different play style with um, different skills and, and just different ways of accomplishing things. Um, some of them have a lot of ranged abilities. Some of them just attack from ranged, period. Some of them um, do like damage really quickly and some of them do damage really slowly, but it's a lot of damage when they do do damage. It's really, really cool how diverse um, all the characters are. Uh, so I am uh, quite happy with that. Um, fast travel is strangely gated by color and shape. Forces you to walk through several unneeded portions to reach destinations uh, you should have been able to teleport to. However, you do receive an item about 50% into like the force completion or something like that that lets you teleport to any of them. Um, while I think that should have been there from the start, the fact that the game gives, you, gives it to you at all uh, ends up being a net positive in my eyes. Uh, the lack of a controllable camera makes this game significantly harder and more obnoxious to, to traverse. Um, I think this is probably one of my biggest issues with the combat um, in general is there, there are some instances where the camera is just a detriment and other times where it's just passable. Um, and if I could just rotate the camera, I'd have an easier time with things. Uh, could just be a me thing though. Um, Ally A... Ally AI picks up fallen items on the ground. It's super cool. Super cool. I, I don't think I've ever played a game where the, the AI party members actually do something other than fight combat or, or outside of combat for that matter. Um, so I was, I was very happy with that. And I'm actually going to add on to here that's not on here. Um, I really, really like when games... Uh, they give you equipment and you can actually see the visible changes of the equipment. While it didn't happen for armor, it happened for weapons. And uh, that's really cool. So I like that. Um, there's no quick swap artifact keybind that I could see. Uh, furthermore, there's no quick use item button that I could see. Um, I think that's a missed opportunity, uh, especially for um, uh, artifacts. Uh, we can... Progress here, save clear data, blah, blah, blah. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, status effects are cool and varied. Um, I really do like a lot of the status effects. Some of them I don't remember what they do, but uh, the one in particular that I really like is heavy. Um, that one's just really cool. It just slows you down a bunch and it doesn't like decrease your effectiveness. You just move slower and you move, um, you have a less distance uh, that you can move. Um, no small map for immediate area that can be viewed instead of the mini map. Uh, I actually debunked this a little while ago. Uh, I found the map. And so, 
uh, this point changes to, I really like that there is an overview map, there is a mini map, and then there's an area map that you can look at to make sure that you've got everything that you uh, The best accessory dilemma. Um, this is, this is a, like a, a thing that just games in general do, and I really wish we could get a better handle on this. So an accessory like 500 HP or 20 strength seems really good and provides a tangible bonus. An accessory like improves flash dodge time is increased is very nebulous, which is good, which is bad in, com in comparison. Um, this is one of the issues that I've always had with like games that make you rely on multiple accessories or even just one accessory slot for that matter is when they give you uh, text based bonuses like uh, your hero gauge changes or, you know, when you guard, you gain HP. It doesn't tell you how much HP or what it changes into or how many seconds of flash dodge time is added to gauge, I guess. Um, why can't there just be actual numbers attached to it? It just would make things a lot easier. Um, but there, there are reasons for that, like going in and changing them. If you had to change them, you would have to change the text rather than just the values, and it would get kind of annoying. And I can, I can see why that's not very prevalent, but I wish it was. Um, and yeah, just as a whole, accessory design just needs to be more even uh, across the board, um, not just in this game, but like all games that use accessories. Um, getting stat bonuses for viewing newly found memories is cool. Um, I really like that there is actually a mechanical benefit for just going out and getting the memories because the memories just seem like uh, a thing that you can go do. But in actuality, um, they, they give you a, a nice little bonus for, for getting them. And it, it's a very small bonus, but it's nice. It's helpful. Uh, let me see, let me see. Any mechanic variety is lacking. Um, I think I would agree with this for the very beginning, but I'm unsure about the end. Um, and I'm purely talking about mechanics because for the most part, there's projectiles and there's um, melee attacks. But like, for example, bosses, Bosses were kind of um, they weren't all too varied, all things considered. I don't know. I'd have to think about that one some more, but I think I think I'd still agree with that uh, at this point. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Move on into combat. This might this might take a little. Well, almost done actually. Uh, not the biggest fan of the combat, but. It got more fun after Connor joined the party and each character thereafter. Um, this, it might be interesting to say that the combat in this game is not that great because if you think about it on a basic level, it's very similar, if not exactly the same, as E's Origins or the Oath of Felghana. Um, you know, you're walking up things and you're swinging your swords. Uh, or whatever weapons you might have. Um, but there are a lot of changes that they made that don't make it the same. They, they, they tweak things just ever so slightly, and it slows down the, uh, the pace um, each time it happens. Um, and because it's like so much of a departure, or it feels like so much of a departure, because it's not as fast-paced overall, um, Everything is just kind of slower, um, whether that be dealing damage, moving around, or, well, you might actually move a lot faster in this game. But the areas are bigger, so that might just be like a one-to-one, -one, or maybe all the other um, went out on this one. I don't know. Um, there's more strategy involved, um, which cause you to take more time. Um, you need to attack certain portions of the boss boss to reveal the weaknesses of uh, the boss to deplete the health bar to go into phase two. Um, sometimes you can deplete this other gauge, which makes the boss 
uh, vulnerable and takes, you know, crit damage or something like that. And it's that kind of stuff that that makes the combat just take more time. Um, there's more system in, systems involved, like status effects and item usage. Um, in a game like Yi's Origin or Ultha Felgana or just basically any of the previous games, you didn't really have uh, those capabilities uh, to a large extent anyway. Um, I know one and two Chronicles, you could use items and things like that, but it wasn't very prevalent. Um, in this game, you're kind of relying on items a lot. So you're going into the menu a lot. You're, you're changing things around. You're switching around your artifacts. Again, it's just taking a little bit more time. Um, added party members, which have differing damage types. Uh, some enemies you're going to do less damage to, so you need to either swap to a party member or add that party member into your, your group so that you can do more damage to the enemy you're fighting. Um, and overall, enemies have more HP, which means the fights are taking way longer than they would in any of the previous titles. Um, interesting, interestingly enough, there's no magic. Um, there are things that people are doing with their skills and, um, they are very magic-y and they probably are magic in of themselves, but there's no magic, uh, uh, mechanic, I guess, in this game. There's no, um, uh, you know, you're not shooting fireballs with one of your, your keybinds. And I thought that was very interesting because this is the first game that actually, well, I guess Yee's One Chronicles didn't have magic too, but um, this it's 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 a weird weird thing when when you'd think they would continue adding it, but instead they they added it to a skill system, which I actually like the skill system. I I should say I don't know if I have that here, but I do like the skill system. Um, it's just kind of weird that there's there's no magic. Um, bosses are less complex. Um, I originally kind of struggled with this point because the bosses in the previous titles, let's exclude Yi's 1 and 2 Chronicles. Let's, let's say Yi's Origin and Oath of Felgana. Um, there's projectiles going all over the place. You need to jump over things. You need to jump on platforms to do damage to this guy so that you can reveal the next phase so that you can go into this and, and, uh, you need to attack behind the boss so that he can get knocked down or something like that. You need to avoid projectiles so that when you kill these uh, little plant things, you reveal the eye on top so you can jump on top and start attacking that so that you can repeat the cycle. Like there's so much going on in all the bosses in those two games. And in this game, there's really honestly not that much going on. Um, which may be good, maybe bad. But uh, I, I just noticed that the, the fights are, are less complex. Um, which I guess perhaps speeds up the combat. Well, uh, let me see. Um, flash guard and flash dodge are really nice mechanics. These are super good um, and they're super useful. And um, they kind of make this combat uh, actually usable. Um, if I was a better player, I could probably make use of these things a lot more. Um, the guards specifically, I think I could, I could do on a regular basis, perhaps. Uh, the flash dodge is, uh, much more difficult, and for the most part, every single time that I did it, it was, uh, by coincidence. Uh, Ally AI likes to stand around and do nothing while I'm dodging around. That's kind of annoying. Um, it could be because I accidentally hit like one of the commands for them to evade or something like that, but um, there there has been a couple of occasions where I'm like, trying not to die, and they're just like, hey, I'm going to follow you instead of attacking. Uh, getting knocked down doesn't grant invincibility. It oftentimes, oftentimes means uh, you'll be hit with multiple heavy-hitting attacks because there's no type of recovery or way to get up faster. Uh, you saw this a couple of times, especially on the Lord of the Forest fight where he did that pillar attack and I was playing Frida and she got hit with every single pillar because there was no way for me to get out of the attack because I got knocked down. Um, it's kind of rough. Um, and it's, it's in a lot of ways, uh, a one shot mechanic. 
uh, very, very tough. Uh, we can save there. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, water combat is not enjoyable. <laughs> the water combat in this game is absolutely awful. Um, holy moly, like, I can't, I, all I could do is do a thrust. Um, which segues me into, if I had to review this game, I'd knock off three points from a 1 to 10 scale just for the fish boss alone. That boss, what, like, the first phase of that boss was by far one of the most unenjoyable experiences I've ever done in a video game. Um, it just, it took me a while to figure out what was going on. And then once I, or no, it took me a while to figure out how to dodge attacks because I was just getting hit over and over again, having no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. And then once I figure out what I'm supposed to be doing, it's freaking impossible to get lined up properly. And so you're just kind of stumbling along, hoping that you actually attack one of the, the orb things at the right time. Meanwhile, the party members are like, oh. I'll attack this one every uh, six minutes, and uh, you'll kill this boss eventually. Thank goodness there's no breath meter. My goodness. Uh, for dungeons, I don't really have any favorites, annoyings, or inflated length by backtracking or anything like that. Um, for the most part, the dungeons were not overstaying their welcome. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, the, the dungeons were, were pretty solid. Um, for Cardinal Sins, backup party members don't receive 100% experience or full experience. Um, yeah. Uh, gotta give backup party members full experience, man. Let me use the characters that I want to use. Alright, we're almost there. Almost there. Uh, for sound, uh, the music is very solid. I, I enjoyed the music quite a bit. Um, the voice acting, the silent protagonist. I think... Once I get around to finishing this Yeez franchise, I think I'm just going to add Silent Protagonist as a cardinal sin. It, it just bugs the crap out of me. I just can't stand Silent Protagonist. There, there's too many problems that come with Silent Protagonist because they know things and they don't say anything. And so, like, plot just, just pretends like you don't know it when you do know it. It just sucks. Um, partial voice acting. Um, I've been a vocal person about this. Um, in this game, there's voice acting for sometimes only part of the dialogue written on the screen. And it is my strong belief that if you're going to add voice acting, you either do minimum the entire main story or you do none of it. Um, when there's partial voice, voice acting, it just takes away from, from the scene, from what's going on. You know, just having this character just randomly speak up in the middle of a, a, a conversation is so distracting. Um, and uh, I don't like it. Uh, I, should, I, should, I should add that as a cardinal sin. Oh, wouldn't that be uh, controversial? Uh, for the graphics, uh, drastic art style change. We went from 2D, well, we went from a 3D world with 2D sprites. Well, yeah, I'll say 3D world. Um, to a 3D world with 3D sprites with uh, 3D enemies. And, and not 3D sprites, I don't know what that, 3D models. Um, and it's just very, very different. Um, I actually wasn't expecting this drastic of an art style change i know yeez 8 does this um but i didn't think they did it before yeez um it is my hope though because with this art style change they have animations that are extremely stiff and just lack polish like the walking animations those things need some work so i'm really hoping that if they do do more 3D titles between now and Yeez 8, by the time Yeez 8 comes around and th with those titles, they kind of clean these things up a little bit, um, make it look a little bit nicer. Um, uh, but other than that, I think the texture work was, was pretty solid. Um, you know, it, it's, it, I think it was a PSP game or something like that. So 
I don't have uh, that many criticisms about it. Um, replay value. Uh, I saw there was a new game plus. Uh, I don't think there's really any replay value. I mean, I, I got 100% my, my uh, whatchamacallit. So I don't know what you're going to replay the game for. Um, let me see. For other stuff, uh, the dialogue text is too big. I had trouble reading a lot in this game. And part of that reason was me being a scrub. But the other part of that reason was the dialogue text was just too big. Um, there were a few puzzles which were nice. I really like the puzzles in this game. Uh, there was the light one, there was the, the frog weight one, which was kind of a weird puzzle. Um, because I got it on first try, but... Uh, and then there was the, um, the, the pathways puzzle with all the... We'll have to move the pathways around. That one was really nice. All right. If the developer is watching, I gotta say this is a very rough first entry for the 3D Yeez games. Um, extremely rough. Um, it, it definitely needs uh, a little more, I don't want to say time in the oven, but um, like if this game maybe had like another four months or something like that, I could really see a lot of um, cleaner animations and um, just more interesting things done with the combat to make it a little bit more diverse, a little bit more fast paced. Um, I also hope that the amnesia uh, story plot device uh, isn't used again. And if it is, I hope it's used as a, uh, a clever and out of the box way to present the story. Um, I've already touched on this, but I don't like amnesia. It sucks. Um, if we're going to use it, let's not use it in the most cliche way possible. Um, let's think of some, some new and fascinating ways to make amnesia interesting again, if that is even possible. Um, but that's going to wrap it up for, for my thoughts on Yeez 4, Memories of Silsetta. Um, overall, like I said, I thought the game was pretty mediocre. Um, but if, if this has to be the product that I get for the other 3D Yeez games to be exceptional or as good or as enjoyable as some of the other Yeez games that I've played, then I will go ahead and accept this dip in quality for uh, something great to happen later. Um, and yeah, uh, but that'll wrap it up for, for this. Uh, so uh, this is where I, I sign out of the video on YouTube.